Before I read the scripture for this morning, I want us to read a verse. Everything you do in life is in response to a voice. Did you hear what I said? Everything we do in life, we are responding to a voice. Either our own voice inside of us, or the voice from our side, or the voice from God. You came to church this morning because you obeyed a voice. And as I bring, I bring God's word to you this morning, you must listen to a voice will speak to you. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21. Isaiah 30, 21. Those, the theme of the revival program is uh, growing kingdom resources through biblical stewardship. And what we have done so far, the three first three days, is to lay the foundation for the theory. Today is a practical. We said to practice biblical stewardship and grow kingdom resources from it, you must understand the pillars of biblical stewardship. This building we are in has a foundation. Do you have engineers in the house? Can you wave your hand? Good. So you will call it substructure that is on ground. That substructure, you know, you don't see with your eyes. But without it, the superstructure cannot stand. That's why we said that biblical sea worship has a substructure. Before you come to the building, there are pillars that are carrying it. So on the first day, Thursday, we laid the pillar of understanding that for you to practice biblical sea worship, your understanding will be correct. And basically, it's to understand that everything you are, everything you have, everything you will ever have, be or become or have, all of them belong to God. They are gifts from above. So when you have that understanding, that way to, what? The clothes you wear is a gift. The watch you are wearing is a gift. The food you ate or you're eating is a gift. The chair you're sitting is a gift. Your life is a gift. And you didn't give these things yourself. They are from above. And the one that gave them is the father of all lives. In whom there is no variation or shadow or turning. If you have this understanding, that way to everything I have, that should be a gift. Because Paul said, with empty we aim, empty we go, the day we die, what are you going to carry along with you? In fact, I was just chatting with my church, is it on Wednesday, that assuming you buy, you buy the whole of butter court, you acquire, 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 the day you die, what is the size of the property you own? How many? What is the size? What are the dimensions of, bury, of, of, of uh, grief? Eh? In fact, some are not even six feet, up to six feet. I went some time ago to conduct a burial in, uh, in Baeza, Okwama in Baeza. When, when they dug the grave, and then I, I was to do the interment, I said, dig more now. Because the, the casket could not, they could not even enter very well. So they know how to use uh, soil to cover. They now told me, sir, the other, the other, yes, yes, yes. So if you dig further, you touch the other. 
So, what do you really own? What do you own? That sister was asking the other day, that was only her mother, her late mother's phone. Is she in church? Is she here today? Where is she? Is he here now with you? Uh -huh. Stand up, auntie. That phone belonged to who before? Who is using it now? So who is the owner now? <laughs> Are we together? So you are only holding it for a while. Life is like what you call Nigeria, certificate of occupancy. You go and buy land. I bought them. I buy them. You go and get what? Certificate of what? Not certificate of ownership. How many years will it expire? It was a trust given to you by government. We say it's my own, it's my own. That's our life is. What you have is certificate of occupancy. You don't have, you don't have certificate of ownership. Everything about you is a gift. Are we together? The second pillar we established on the second day is faithfulness. Paul will say to Corinthians, is, is required or still was. A steward is not the owner of the property. The word steward is drawn from ancient practice. We are stewards, we are managers. I was telling them on that day that the closest word to stewards in biblical times is the word manager. The king owns properties. And he's about to try, or he's around. It's okay. Lambert, could you help me manage this? It's not your own. You're managing it for the king. On behalf of the king. Regularly, you go and give report to the king. If the king traveled, on the day of return, you go and give him. That's why Paul, that's why Paul borrowed the idea. It is required. Moreover, it is required of a steward that he be what? Remember that they will say, he didn't say that he be faithful. He didn't say that he be faithful. It's more than that. It's more, he said that he be found faithful. So it's not a matter of our faithful last year. When Jesus comes now, will he find you faithful? That when he comes, he will not take you on a way. Faithfulness. That you should be faithful. Be consistent. Be honest. Be true. Everything you do, that's faithfulness. Let your word be your bond. Don't say, here yeah, was it written down. That's evidence. Then yesterday, we talked about the third pillar. That the pillar of gratitude. In Luke chapter 17, the account of the ten lepers. Jesus was passing. Like what pastor was saying before. You see, listen to me. Many miracles in life depend on your positioning. Your positioning is critical to your breakthrough. If you are absent on the day of your visitation, you miss out your miracle. So Jesus was walking, he was going to Jerusalem. And then he was heading, but he passed through beside Samaria and Galilee. And then as he was going, he got to enter the village. Ten lepers say we will not miss opportunity today. We must grab it. This man will not pass here without doing something about that situation. So they followed the law. The Jewish rule that required that if you're a leper, you shouldn't get close, closer more than six feet to somebody that doesn't have leprosy. Or that they will be, be stoned to death. They stood up far and called him. Jesus! In most versions you say Jesus, Master. I told you yesterday, I don't know, the word there is stronger than Master. What is there in the Greek is not Rabbi. A Jesus, Chief, or Commander, or Overruler. Have mercy on us. Normally, we are told as Jesus, heal us. Because those people knew that one, this one that Jesus has come will grab everything grabable from him. 
Because opportunity sometimes comes how many times? We will not miss it. How mercy on us! And they were shouting and shouting. And then Jesus then paused. And Peter turned. Jesus said, okay. Go. Show yourself to the priest. Listen to me. When in Deuteronomy chapter 8, Moses spoke to the people of Israel. He said, God said, I made you suffer hunger and lack for these years in order to teach you a lesson. The lesson of dependency. To teach you that man shall not live by bread alone. But by what? Every word. Does it mean you be eating what? Listen, because every word of God has within it the seed or the power to perform it. So when Jesus said, go, show yourselves to the priests, he already had empowered the word to heal them. So when he says, go and show, because as a law, it's the priest that could satisfy somebody that the person had been cleansed of leprosy. It was as they took the step of faith, not before, it was that they obeyed a voice. They found that they are all cleansed. Then one of them said, wow! So he ran back, ran back to Jesus. And then he prostrated himself, bowed fire on the front. He had his feet. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Jesus said, Were they not ten that were cleansed? How come it's only this man, this stranger, this, this foreigner, that came back to say thank you? So let us know that gratitude is a divine expectation. You don't take things for granted. Say, God understands and grateful. You must show gratitude. Gratitude is, is a pillar of true worship. That you know in life, I am grateful for my wife. I'm grateful for my husband. I'm grateful for my children. I'm grateful even for the bad times and the good times. I'm grateful to God for them. So, brethren, this day, leave that verse of scripture on the screen. Isaiah 30, 21. We're concluding with a fourth pillar. I told you there are seven, but because we have four days, we are having the fourth pillar today. Before I mention that, here, you see, whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. Let's rise up on our feet. Holy Spirit, that way. Well, Come in this place, Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place, Omnipotent Father of mercy. Sing it together. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy water.
want to pray a prayer. Say, God, don't allow me to miss the voice. Grant me grace to hear the voice. Say, so your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way. Walk in it. When Elijah went to the mountain, God wanted to speak with him. There was earthquake, there was fire, there was wind. But God did not speak. Through any of those phenomena of nature, but it was a still, small voice. May God speak to you, that voice that speaks to your ears. Say, this is the way, this is the word. Follow it, walk in it, obey it. You have your breakthrough in it. Father, thank you so much as you as speak your word. Speak to each one of us, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Please, let's have a seat. As we open to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, 1 to 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1 to verse 7. Sister Lambert, God bless you for your testimony. Yesterday you were here. You were here yesterday. And I like the fact that you, you, one of the ways, in fact, you use uh, different ways of, different methods we say how to express gratitude. You use words, you use song, and you use testimony. The Lord spared your life for a purpose. And for the rest of the days of your life, the grace to fulfill it, the unction to fulfill it, may it not dry in your life. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 8. 1 to 7. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Moreover, brethren, we make known to you the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. First of all, what are the churches of Macedonia? There are three. The church in Philippi, the church in Thessalonica, and the church in Berea. They were the churches in Macedonia. That in the great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded in the riches of their liberality. For I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing, imploring us with much urgency that we would receive the gift and the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And not only as we had hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. I want you to note that verse 5. And not only as we had hoped, but they first, first gave themselves to the Lord. And then to us. ultimate demonstration of biblical stewardship. The grace of giving as the ultimate demonstration of biblical stewardship. In other words, for you to practice the grace of giving, if it's biblical stewardship, you require the grace of giving. Paul was telling the Corinthian church, a church that was in that, in fact, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7 or so, Paul said that church lacked in no spiritual gift. All the spiritual gifts were full in that church. It was a church that had large membership, powerful members, large congregation, worthy members. But it was a church that had a lot of problems. A lot of issues. And then Paul is telling them here, yeah, ah, there are stories about your church doesn't lack in diligence. Even in your love for us apostles. But there's one area you see lack. And that is in the area of the grace of giving. You lack you, are, you excel in all of these ones. You excel in this. If they are true, you have a church profile. You are like this. They clap for you. You are just on top. This one, you are on top. But when it gets to the issue of giving, you are lacking. Like I said earlier on, understanding, faithfulness, and gratitude, they are, they are the theories of biblical sea worship. They practice, they laboratory, 
or that shows that actually you understand, you understood. You want to be faithful and you are grateful is that you give. So what does the grace of giving mean? Number one, grace of giving means a commitment to giving at God's specific command without reservation. Giving the moment God says, give this without hesitation or reservation. No matter what it is. God says, give this. We're going to come back to this. God says, go and give it. You don't even laugh. So long you hear the voice. Say, this is the way. This is what I want you to give. Give it. That is the, that is the grace of giving. Number two definition. The grace of giving refers to a healthy understanding or the proper order of biblical giving for God's kingdom business. The order. And what is the order? First, you give to God. And second, you give to servants, God's servants according to the will of God. That is what Paul said in that Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 5. Bring it back to the screen. There's a proper understanding. He said, and not only as we had hoped, but they first. The issue a lot of times is that word first. Can we say first? Can we say it again first? We're going to see another place where that first came. On this matter of giving. God is saying first. First, seek you what? Seek you what? First, what? First, the problem of every human being is the, that question of first. What occupies the first position in your life? See, they first, they first gave themselves to who? To who? To the Lord. And then what again? And then to who? Are you, church, are you here? Is it, are you not sitting on the screen? I want to hear you. I want to hear you. So I know you are, you are responding to me. That they first get themselves to who? And then to who again? Who are the us? The apostles. By the will of God. If you don't know it, please let me tell you this. When Gideon was to fight the Midianites, there were two souls. The sword of God and the sword of Gideon. In Chronicles, the prophet said, believe you, believe God and what will happen to you? You'll be established and believe in his prophet, you'll be what? you prosper. The two. Give the first Give themselves to the Lord and then to us. Church, listen. Any giving that you didn't give first to the Lord, you gave to a man of God, you are manipulated. Any giving that doesn't begin with giving first to God, jumps God and gives you, you are, you're under manipulation. They have manipulated you. I had a lot of men who are going to manipulating people like that. Am I communicating? Then any giving for God that starts with obeying God and doesn't obey the servants of God is not complete. The two, one of the swords is missing. Let me tell you this. Don't ever say, well, what's important to me is that so long I'm okay with God. I'm okay with God. I don't care about church. I don't care about what pastor says. You are shortchanging yourself. Instead of you to be in a church and, and then walk at crossroads consistently against the pastoral vision of the church that God gave, it's better to leave that church than to stay there and cause problems for yourself, for your soul. One of our elderly pastors, pastor one of our big churches in the garden for more than 35 years. On the day of retirement, after retirement service by the church, a family that left the church the first year he came, they came back to church. He didn't hear me. This pastor came, was called by the church. As the pastor arrived, 
that family left the church because they didn't like the pastor. So they went to other Baptist church. After 35 years, as the pastor is retiring, what did they do? They came back to church. I'm not telling you a story, a cock and bull story. It's the pastor himself that told me this story. The family came back. Because when the pastor first got to the church, and in those days when, those of you who are older Baptists, when Baptist denomination was being misrepresented, you see, they were, teaching, they were teaching that we didn't believe in speaking in tongues. We didn't believe in clapping. All those were hog rubbish. But they didn't believe in Holy Spirit. Rubbish. It was wrong interpretation of Baptist doctrine. And this man believed in the Holy Spirit. So when he called to the church and believed in speaking in tongues, in the full manifestation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that family didn't like it. They left the church. This one will be a Baptist pastor. They left the church. But after 35 years, they came back. I said, well, I wish if some, if someone has spoken to me, but it's better that way than they get there and be causing problems for their soul. They first gave and then. That's a biblical pattern. So the grace of giving understands this. Number three, the grace of giving refers to the innate inclination to identify and meet needs. Somebody that has this grace, their eyes are always haunting, like radar. Where there are needs, and the moment they see needs, they want to do something about it. They, it is, it is like it's in them. It's almost compulsive. They have this, they have this joy. They derive joy. They, they see a need without having to wait. They do something, and then when they are doing something, then it is beyond them. Now begin to call church, please. That is, that is grace or giving. Am I communicating to somebody here? Do you have people like that? Have you seen people like that? They will never see a need and keep quiet or do nothing about it. That is a manifestation of the grace of giving. Number four, the grace of giving is a lifestyle of giving and generosity that is not limited by adverse circumstances. The lifestyle of giving and generosity that is not limited by adverse circumstances. No matter how bad things are, the person gives, loves to give, loves to give, loves to give. It's like any time you're having calling for giving, say, ah, I will not be left out. My name must be on the register. I must give my own. Even if, if, if they say, ah, please stop. Or what? They say, no, I will. no, 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 no. This thing I must give. I must give my own. That person is manifesting the grace of giving. Let me say this. Hello. Hello. Every one of us here is generous. What did I say? As all of us are here, all of us are generous. Ask me how. Ask me how now. Should I tell you? Some are generous in giving. Some are generous in taking. There are people, they never give their stories that I don't have. There's never a time they have. Never ever. Because their own concept of, of generosity is generosity in what? Their hand is always like this. In January, they didn't have. In June, in June they don't have. December, they still don't have. Because every time, their hand is like this. I tell you, the medicine to cure greed is generosity. The medicine of greed is what? I want to prescribe for you this morning. If you are greedy, do you know the medicine, to, the tablet to swallow? Eh? It's generosity. <laughs> generosity will cure you of your sickness or greed. Is somebody hearing me? Is somebody hearing me? I know what in a petrol, you know what I discovered over these years in ministry. Church, I have had the privilege of pastoring in almost part, every part of Nigeria. I pastored in the north, I pastored in the west, I pastored in the south east, and now I've been pastoring here in the south south for 28 years. And I can tell you what I've seen consistently. These two greedy, these great generous people, one is always better. The ones that are 
generous in giving, their lives are always better than those who, who are generous in what? It is you know, because Jesus stated the principle, it is more blessed to give than to what? Than to receive. It's more blessed. Let me tell you. When he uses the comparative more, it means both are blessed. When you receive, you are blessed. Isn't that so? Somebody dashes you $100 now. Are you not blessed? But what the Bible is saying, it is a blessing that somebody gave you. But the greater blessing is that you, you are the one that gave it. Generosity. It's just like the antidote, the, 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 the medicine for, for covetousness is contentment. If you are somebody that's always covetous, I'll prescribe, I'll tell you the, the drink, the medicine you should go and swallow. What is that? What is more the medicine? Contentment. Contentment will cure you of covetousness. As generosity will cure you of what? Greed. So these are the meanings. Now, let us now, let want to show, as I begin to wrap up, now examples of grace of giving in action in the Bible. I just want to show Hala for you some examples from scriptures of people who manifested the grace of giving. Number one is Abraham. In Genesis chapter 22, from verse 1 to verse 19, that is a story there. Genesis chapter 22. We're not really going to read the entire verses, but just bring it here. Now it came to pass, after these things, that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he said, yeah, I am. Then he said, take now your son, your only son, your only son Isaac, whom you love. <laughs> is it how God will qualify you for him? Take now, if you have stopped at take now your son, has he not communicated? George, are you here? He could have communicated. He said, then he went for it. He said, your only son, Isaac, the one I mean, though. So you don't think I'm talking about Ishmael. Whom, now he went on to say that whom you love, who is very dear to you. And go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Do you know, the, do you know burnt offering? Burnt offering is the only offering where the priest doesn't have any share. Everything is burnt, 100%. Everything is burnt. Wow. So God is now saying, Abraham, that son you waited for 25 years before he arrived. I want him now. Offer him to me. Offer him as a burnt offering. You will burn him completely. Hey! When Abraham got this kind of message, what did he do? We start looking back. Abraham just mumuishly, mumuishly obeyed. When it has to do with the voice, remember I told you, you listen to a voice. As he heard God, Abraham quickly, he didn't tell his wife from the story. Women in the house, Women in the house, are you there? Hey, I want you to imagine your mother, Sarah. Your husband comes back to the house. I said, darling, <laughs> there's something instruction God gave us to give to you. Say, God said uh, we should uh, offer our son as a bond offering. Mothers, what will you do? Mothers, answer me now. <laughs> Wait, this is a woman that had her child after 90 years. The child she, saw, she waited for 90 years. Now come to say, uh, God says uh, we should go and offer him. Mothers in the house. Mommy, mommy, Jumbo, can you speak for the woman in the house? What will you do? If your mama is Mama Sarah. I, I, I didn't hear you, man. Okay, are you sure you heard him well? Because you will say, hey, this man has come again, no? Well, I said, this man has a pattern of, of creating confusion. We were living in our house back in all. One day he just came home and said, God, say we should move. And then I was asking him to where he said, God didn't tell me, let us move. And I, I left everything and followed this man, no? Well, sir, then one day this man came again and, and said, God told him that I'm going to have a child. And I waited, no child. You see him now? This man has come again with his problem. 
This time around, we don't walk. In fact, she become a theologian. Say, when the God tell you he likes human sacrifice, something wrong with you, my husband. You need to go and see doctor. You are having malaria. So that happened, and that's why Abraham didn't tell this. He didn't tell the woman. Carried the boy, and this boy was already in the teen, was not a small child. And then ca- carried the instruments of sacrifice. They made the journey. They took three days. They journeyed. But God said, "I will show you the particular mountain." Then they saw the God said, "This is a mountain." So okay, he told so that the secret will be kept. He told the servants, "Wait here." He carried. The fire put the wood on the head of Isaac, and only two of them were now climbing the mountain. Isaac now understood the law of uh, the, the rule of sacrifice. There are three things you need in a sacrifice one is what? Fire. One is wood. And number three is animal. And they say, Oh, daddy, that's, that's a missing link. Where is the lamb for sacrifice? But uh, please, I want to ask you, Choi, who was the lamb at that point? Who was the lamb? <laughs> the one carrying the, 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 the wood didn't know it was, it was a lamb. Oh, but thank God for Abraham. Abraham made a prophetic answer. He said, the Lord will provide himself the lamb. Oh, we need fathers like Abraham. It is in Hebrews we get to know that actually one prepared Abraham to go. He was hoping that God that gave him Isaac originally, we see raising from the dead. That was fate. And then he followed. He got there. He put it, he put the wood, lit fire. Oh, thank God for Isaac. Bible theologians say, thank God it was not Jacob. <laughs> that day, the old man for here went. Because Jacob would have beaten the hell out of him. And I hope to go and report to mommy. <laughs> he cooperated with his father. Old man, more than 100 years old. He cooperated with the father. The father tied him. Did him. I think he was just... I can imagine. That initial time. My, my brother, what's your name? Eh? Oyil. Oyil. And your first time in the church. This is not your last time. You are permanently located here. <laughs> Amen. God has permanently located him here. Amen. You're not going back again. <laughs> Praise the Lord. See, so imagine eh, that first time when the dad carried rope, come the tie in legs. What thing could they go through the, the, the boy's mind? Then he can carry in hand, tie him. The boy they watch him, Papa. Imagine, please, church, let's make it three. Imagine what will be going on to the mind of Daddy hates me like this. What did I do? And lied to him. Listen, grace of giving. It was as he had finished. He raised the knife. Then the voice spoke. Don't lay hand on the boy. And I know you fear me. Because of this thing you have done, you didn't deny me your best. I'll give you my best. In blessing, I bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. Your children will occupy the gates of the enemies. In ancient times, that promise of your, your children taking hold of the gate of enemies is a powerful promise of victory. Nobody shall prevail against them. But meanwhile, it is you and I that know it was a test. Abraham never knew it was a test. It was at the end because they passed. Abraham, you have passed. You have passed. May you never fear the day God will test you. You have me suffering from COVID-19. Abraham had the grace of giving. He, he, he gave completely. He obeyed completely. He didn't reserve. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't manipulate. He just obeyed God. That is the grace of giving in action. What is it that you have? You cannot give to God. I 
One man, a Baptist is a Baptist incidentally. Their church was building a, a, a new auditorium. And he had just retired. And he had no house in his village. So his plan as they pay him, we're working in a multinational. That they, when they pay him his entitlements, at least you put your house in the village. <laughs> the day he got his gratuity, God said, use it to build my house. That's your gratuity. Build my house. The man suspended because the man had grown to key into whatever God is doing. God owes nobody. When God is asking you to do something, he has already made arrangement to embarrass you. The man obeyed. People were calling him a fool. This man, church, 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 church. You'll be pastor. Some were accusing him that maybe the pastor of the church had bewitched him. But man said, God, ask me to do it. In the case of Abraham, you notice that the prophetic statement of Abraham came to pass. He said, the Lord will provide himself a lamb. Isn't that what happened? He don't look behind him. Remember, you will hear a voice behind you. He don't look. Look at a ram. And that was what he used. God provided for him. That is the grace of giving. Number two example. David. In 2 Samuel chapter 24. Yeah, thank you. Leave that verse on the script. Leave it on there. Leave it there. 2 Samuel chapter 24. Something happened. Because of time, you know, uh, <laughs> the, the chronicle version will tell us in 1 Chronicles chapter 21 verse 1 that Satan we stood late instigated David to count Israel. In fact, David wanted to conduct a census, like Nigeria wants to conduct a census. And Joab, the bloodthirsty army general, said, Oga, oh why do you want to commit this sin against God? David said, Go and count them. Then who is the king? So the Bible says David's word prevailed over that of Joab. Joab went up more than nine months. Moved from length, the length to length across the land, counted Abu men, came back with the, the, the figure 800,000 Abu bodied, bodied men in Israel and 500,000 in Judah. Then, as he got a report, hey, then David realized that committed a sin. I have sinned. This Najid was wrong. Then God sent the prophet to him. Okay, I give you three options. Choose one. In fact, this is one of the things that lets you know what leaders do affects the people they are leading, whether you like it or not. The decisions of those in that's why we must be very careful the type of people placed in leadership. I thank God for Nikon and Baptist Church, thank God for your pastors, the one that retired, the one. They are, they, you have a kind of pastor, who call, you scatter your people. Am I communicating? Is somebody hearing me? Your answer is, are you hungry? There's a kind of person you call here, you will scatter, the church person will scatter you. Are, are you hearing me? So it's important how the right people, people are godly, go fearing, have a mind of Christ, not an agenda for themselves. Okay, I'll give you three, uh, seven years of famine. Three months of being chased, chased by enemies. David had no more experience. When Saul so used to chase him, he knows that it's not a good experience. Or three days of pestilence. David then said, I better fall to the hand of God. I choose the third one. I said, okay. An angel of death was sent. Before he realized it, 70,000 people had died. David said, God, why? You, why? It, it is me. Let the punishment be upon me and my house. These people are innocent. God said, okay, for it to end, go to the house of Arana. Go and acquire an, be an altar there. Then King David, now when he royal this thing was, Arana from Asa, oh, 
king. Are we safe? He said, yes. No, no fear. Don't fear. You have something I need. Please, can I have the land to build an altar? Listen to me. That was the same place where Abraham was offered Isaac. The same place. That is the same place the temple was later built on. In fact, Jewish rabbis say it is the same place where, where um, Cain and Abel performed the first offering in the Bible. That's the claim of Jewish rabbis. It's not in the Bible, that's Jewish rabbis that are teaching. Now, but it's the same place. Then Aaron said, Oh, okay, ah, take it free now. Ah, it's all where I got. David, then this is the response of David. Then the king said to Araona, No, but I will surely buy it from you for a price. Nor will I offer bond offerings to the Lord my God with that which costs me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. Somebody with the grace of giving gives sacrificially. You say, I will not give God something that cost me nothing. Now, let, let me tell you what it means. If you have, if you have one million naira and they are calling for offering, you give 10,000 naira, it costs you nothing. It's giving that pinches you away. The thing pinch you. That is sacrificial giving. Many people will go and say, I, I'm giving my widow's mind. And like I tell them in my church, they are telling lies. One, you're not a widow. Two, what you gave is not everything you have. You're a liar. So, sacrificial giving, what David meant here is I, what I will give. I will not offer God something that costs me nothing. I will, it will pinch me. That is the grace of giving. Something that touches you, pinches you well, well. When you give it, you know that. It's just like, it's just like you know, there are certain alerts. You get a lot, credit a lot. When it hits your phone, you look at it. How do you feel? <laughs> eh? You just shut yourself. Pastor, I say, I shut my head. You look at me. They are thinking. They think fast now. You have, you have an alert. Credit alert. Just kawaii. You, you did a job three years ago. Nobody paid you for having forgotten. Then you just alert. Kawaii. And as you check the alert, 30 million naira. I have been created your account. How will you feel? You, you, eh? You'll be angry, Abby. You'll be very angry. <laughs> How will you feel? Particularly when you remember, okay, that's that job. You say, God, thank you. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. What the Lord has done for me. Then you begin to sing. You begin to ever. You can even go and shout. Hey! I remember one day in a yeah, beauty project. You know what it's beauty project? One day, one of my daughters in the church said, call me one Sunday afternoon like that. Daddy, daddy. My madam said, I should, she wants the church account. The woman, I don't, I don't even know her. Now, but she's not a member of, she's not a Baptist. That the Lord Ask her to give something to support her project. And that she wants the account immediately. She doesn't want the temptation to use the money. I said, please, I will get the account with her. I quickly, I'll get, let me get in touch with my treasurer. She said, but the woman said, no, no, no. Can't they use their own account? I said, no. As a policy I have as pastor. No. Anything church money, don't give me another hole. Before tomorrow they say, pastor, don't church, chop church money. I need a hole. Hold up. I said, let her be patient. I'll get it. So the, then eventually I got and sent it to her. She forwarded it to the, to, the, to the lady. Monday afternoon, I was standing, talking with uh, somebody. When uh, uh, the, my phone, uh, the alert. <laughs> you know, there's some alert you get. It will shake. At least it will shake, symbol, it will shake uh, uh, the phone. <laughs> so I not checked. I said, what? I'm going to check it. 32 million naira. Hey, I didn't know when I shouted. I quickly called my treasurer. Have you got, he said, he also, I got a lot. What the Lord has done for me. 
girl, the child, the now imagine God is asking you, empty your account for my kingdom. That's what David said here. Yeah. It's hard or giving sacrificially. Number three example. First King chapter 17. The widow of Zarephath. The widow of Zarephath. Second King chapter, first King, sorry, first King chapter 17. You know, in the, in the early part of that chapter, Elijah made a pronouncement of famine in the land. There will be drought until I say otherwise. So the famine has come. Scarcity, food scarcity everywhere. Famine, everybody was. Go at the point, go and say, okay, uh, 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 Elijah, go to the brook. I prepared some birds to be your chef and your sea wash. Go there. Elijah relocated to the bush by a brook. And then it was ravens, very selfish kind of birds that eat carcass. That, those were the cooks and sea wash that God ordered to be cooking for Elijah. He got a point, the brook dried, no water again. God said, okay, go to Zarephath. I prepared, I commanded the widow to take care of you. Elijah moved. And as, she, as he entered the city gate, look at a woman fetching firewood. Bring that, go to, go to verse 15. Go to verse 15, please, because of time. Go to verse 15. No, give me 13. Now, this is a widow. And Elijah said to her, do not fear, go and do as you have said. But make me a small cake from it first. Remember the first again? Hello, church, are you together? That first has come again. The woman said, oh God, as you see me, I have come to collect wood. I will go and prepare the last meal for me and my son who will eat and die. Elijah said, no, you will not die. But make me a small cake from meat first and bring it to me the first again. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. Continue. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bean of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the head. Are we together? So this woman, like, who was the one that pronounced the drought, the famine? Who was the one? Imagine you were you in this woman's position. The man that caused the problem. The woman could have abused him. You could have abused him. You, are you not the one that, that prophesied it? We are coming to me to ask for food. Go, they say, now they say, turn the fire you. <laughs> turn the fire you. Are you not the one that caused this problem? Or she could have said, okay, you are very heartless. I'm a widow. I don't have a husband. You're asking me, me and you, so who's supposed to give the other? Are you not supposed to give me? I'm a widow. But she chose to obey as pronounced that prophetic thing. So the grace of giving gives as commanded. Of course, he had a boy with a bunch of a lunch box of five loaves of bread and two fish. In John chapter 6, I don't have time to read it. John chapter 6, that day that Jesus went on a crusade, and he got a point, evening came, he asked the disciple, What do we do? Where do we get food? Then Andrew said, There's one boy here. Philip told Andrew, There's a boy here who has five loaves of bread and two fish. I thank God for that boy. That boy's mother gave him that thing as his lunch box. As they are going, you know, you take it. Please take this. Is so, you know, today we call it a lunch box. That was the boy's lunch box. But the boy was willing to release it for Jesus. And you know that when he released, the lunch box of five loaves of bread and two feet. What did Jesus do? He multiplied it. What you give, God will multiply. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Finally, brethren, I close with this. The churches in Macedonia. The testimony of Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 about the churches, the churches that were in poverty, the bottom rock the bottom of poverty. Like I tell them, you say you are poor, you have never seen jam poverty before. 
You will leave your house and pour. When you go outside, you see somebody poorer than you, you swallow your own. These people were at the bottom, or bottom of poverty. And Paul says, despite their poverty, they were still willing to give. And they were begging, please, allow us to give. Allow us to give. That is the grace of giving. That you say, yes, as part of my stewardship, I will give to support the work of God. Church, I've been told, as much as I inquired, there are targets the church has set for the year. Normally, when God gives a vision, He gives a provision to achieve the mission or the vision. And most of the time, delays in finishing projects in churches is not caused by God. It's caused by people that refuse to respond. Today, I invite you to imbibe the grace of giving. Giving that gives obeys to the fullest without, without reservation because God never owes anybody. God will never owe you in Jesus' name. Amen. May we rise up on our feet. Touch me one more time, oh Lord. Touch me one more time, oh Lord. I need a touch from the master. I need a touch from the Lord. Touch me one more time, oh Lord, oh Lord. Touch me one more time, oh Lord, oh Lord. Touch me one more Be the joy from the Lord. Touch me one more time. Can we bow our heads? Begin to talk to God about what you've heard. The grace of giving as the ultimate demonstration of biblical sea worship. Do you have that grace? Do you have that grace? The word of God is clear. He that waters, others shall be watered. God never owes any man. As Abraham obeyed, he gave what God requested for. He didn't know it was a test. God, he never, God never owed him. He was better off at the end of the day. For David, as he bought that land for the altar and offer the bond offering the disaster the pestilence were brought to an end the woman was there after that widow as she obeyed the instruction produce small small portion first and then for yourself and your son she obeyed god miraculously ensured that she never lacked she her son and her household for the duration of the drought, God provided. That boy that had a lunchbox, five loaves of bread and two pieces of fish, Jesus multiplied it. You can't imagine that boy that day looking at what, she, what he came with, what he, his mother gave him, how Jesus multiplied it miraculous right in his presence. Some people say the two baskets that were left over, but the passage does not tell us what happened. Some say they were given to that boy. Some say it was given shared among the disciples. We don't know. It's speculation. But you can imagine that boy, that joy, were willing to release. What you release unto the Lord, God multiplied. God surely multiplied. And the churches in Macedonia, they received, oh, the all round grace of all sufficiency for all, all good works. Talk to God this moment in time. Say, God, give me this grace of giving. I need it. If you have it, say, God, I need to grow in it. Nobody ever graduates from giving. Never. Never graduate. 
are you are you generous in giving or generous in receiving which one are you generous in say god help me to imbibe this grace of giving paul said you excel just as in the excelling several other things knowledge in his hand in love for us and several other things there's something that is lacking also excel in the grace of giving say god yes you might be good in teaching might be good in preaching you might be good in praying you might be good in, sh in caring but the grace of giving do you have it say god clothe me with the grace of giving clothing with the grace of giving this day i want you also to ask god for God to remove the bread of adversity and water of affliction from your life. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 20. Every bread of adversity. Every water of affliction. Say God I call on you today. Enough. For new covenant Baptist church. Adversity shall not arise again the second time in the name of Jesus. Talk to God. Talk to God. Every bread of adversity, every water of affliction. Lord, we ask today, we receive authority to overcome them. No more bread of adversity, no more water of affliction in the congregation of our people, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Are you here this morning, on this last day, or this Siwashi Revival encounter? You are trusting God for a breakthrough, a major breakthrough. You have tried all your, the best, the best you can. It never worked. Like Peter and the, the other ones fished all through the night. They couldn't catch a single fish. Human effort without divine help will avail to nothing. It just takes one moment of intervention by jesus for your story to change you are here this morning you have tried on a particular issue you have tried and toyed and toyed not nothing seems to be working you now want to say jesus i invite you into this please can you come forward you have tried and tried nothing has worked peter told jesus that day we we tried all through the night we couldn't catch anything but at your word your word. The Bible tells us they cast the night. All the fish, all of, wherever they were hiding, they were commanded by heaven to answer to the apostles. We were told they caught so much fish that the net started breaking. They needed help. They are toyed and toyed. Nothing has worked. Say, God, I hand over this matter. Take over. Handing over. Handing over. Handing over. Handing over. Handing over. Handing over. Into God's hand. We are handing over. Handing over. Handing over. Handing over. And in over, and in over, into God's hand. I am and in over, 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 into God's hand. Something you have been telling. You have used all that you know, made all the phone calls, all the contacts, but you made frustration. You now say, God, on this altar, on this second day of April 2023, I invite you in, take over. I invite you to take over, oh God. I can see him now. I can see him now. Oh, I can see him. Do him, delay in my favor. 
I can see him now. I can see him now. I can see him moving mightily in my favor. Those of you who start singing that song. I can see him now. I can see him now. I can see him moving mightily in my favor. I can see him now. I can see him now. I can see him moving mightily in my favor. Sing that song. Only you, those of you in front, can sing that song. Sing one to go. Say it as you mean it. You are confessing. You are prophesying. God asked Ezekiel, can these bones live again? Elijah, Ezekiel said, no, you know. And they said, God said, prophesy. It was as you were prophesying that that life bone rose to bone and then they joined together. So speak, speak for us. Sing that song, prophesy. Let God arise on your behalf into that situation. You have tried and tried. You have toyed all this night, all through the night. You have toyed throughout 2022. Nothing worked. Up to now, nothing has worked. Say, God, I'm surrendering it to you now. Lord, take over. So say it with your mouth. I can see him. See God walking in your favor. See God intervening in your situation. See God making, turning things that look impossible to become possible. Father, I call upon your name this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, that faithful night, Peter and Co., they toyed all through the night, but nothing to show for it. But Lord, you had a need. And then you requested for what they had, which you needed. And that was a boat. They gave you the boat. Then when you have, they are giving you what you needed, they had. You give them what they needed, they lacked. And you say, cast into the deep. And Lord, when they obeyed, they caught so much fish. Lord of heaven and earth, these ones that come before you today, they say, Lord, we have reached our wits end. Take over. Lord, take over. Take over, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Take over on behalf of your sons and daughters, those issues, oh God, in the office at home. They have tried and they have been trying and trying. Nothing seems to be working. Some of them even have been mocked, despised. Because they have confessed their faith in you. They, 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 the Sammy says, oh God, you should not allow him, his enemies to laugh over him. Lord, don't allow the enemies to laugh over them in the name of Jesus. They will say, what is his God? Every day, church, 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 Bible, 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 Bible. Why do you have to show for it? Lord, uh, today, today, this Palm Sunday 2023, I stand here, oh Lord, rise on behalf of your children. Arise, oh Lord, let your enemy be scattered. Arise, oh Lord, let your enemies be scattered. Arise, O Lord, let your enemies be scattered. O Lord, my God, arise. The Lord, may the Lord arise on your behalf in the name of Jesus. I see victory on the right, victory on the left, victory at the front, victory at the back, in the name of Jesus. I hear a phone call, text message, coming, the matter is settled. May the Lord settle your matter beyond their imagination. The Lord bless you mightily. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Pastor will do something now. You go go back. Pastor, that's all we need to do. When you are done theory, you go to practical. And the practical, you must do it. 
to show you understood the theory. In life, nothing can replace giving. In fact, let me tell you who you are today and what you are today is part of the outcome of your giving life. Who you are and what you are today is connected to your giving life. It's connected to your prayers, connected to your vision, the, t- the confessions of your mouth, more especially giving. There are principles that guide the affairs of men in this world. One of them is giving. So this morning, I understand the church is aiming to install a, what do you call it now? Solar, pow- solar power? Huh? What's that? So, so la, so la panel, eh? Okay. Oh, tell me which one is it? Which one is it? Where is it? Where is it written there? Okay, solar. Okay, church needs. Landscaping project ongoing. 12 kilowatt solar inverter. Purchase accessories and installation at 5 million ongoing. And then pastor's official car. These are the three needs of the church. Uh, okay, they are written here. Let there be light. Let there be what? And there was so this program here. How many have you already received? The five million naira target for the solar system. How much have you got so far? That's what you have so far. Or you need. Huh? And you need you need how much to make it up? Okay, that means you need additional you need additional uh, additional four million. We will raise it here. We will raise it here. Today. How many of you know uh, Heat Up? Heat Up? Heat Up? Christian Center. How many of you know the church? We are my friend. Chris Oware is the is is president and senior pastor. You know it? That auditorium. When the auditorium, Pastor, sit down now. I know they punish you. That was the children. The very first AC that were bought, they invited me to a program many years ago. I went there to minister. And the heat that I, I enjoyed that day <laughs> hit me well, well. So, and me, when I've been to our church, they enjoy AC. Those of you who know our church, all the ACs here were you are giving my members. So not sure that about them. The ones in a former that are mounted on the wall and the ones that are standing. All those, I think they are eight. They were a single person gave them many years ago. He listened to a voice. The first one, the man on the wall, was somebody, a voice, said, God asked me to do this. Pastor, please permit me to do it. So who am I to tell you no to what God said you should do? Because for long we've been praying to have ACs. Like all of you are suffering heat now. Even these ACs are standing here. Don't what are they standing? Pastor, why are the ACs standing? Uh, so they decided to pack up. Better service them. Before I come here, and don't allow me to be suffering this kind of heat. I would have report to the King Jumbo. <laughs> so then, so when I said, yeah, God said, I said, okay, go ahead. The man, he bought, he needed only my permission. The man bought, he brought his own technician. He only assessed, you'll be sure that the insulation capacity could carry those ACs. So they mounted. He brought his own, they, they, they mounted. Then he got a point, another person came. The God asked him to use big ones. This one that I doubled his size. You know, those of you know our church, the bigger than this. The God asked him to bring five of them. Later he made them eight. 
an individual in response to God. Church, why should we be doing project for 30, the, the, the 10 years? Is our own God Paul? Lambert, is it Baptist God Paul? Huh? Let's just open our feet. You hear a voice. Your ear speaking from behind. Say, this is the way. Walk in it. As we are here, we are more than that project. As we are here, we are more than what? That project. So church as a seal, a memorial, and a testimony that we had sea worship revival. It's different from other kinds of revival. I told you it's, it's different. See what she revival is to, revive, to encourage us to be revived in giving, what is happening our God with everything we have, including our pocket. That's the that's see what she. I come here and then pray, pray, and then we don't respond. Then I've, 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 not, I've not done them assignment God gave me. You can't talk to God and I begin to talk to God. Talk to God, say, God, what should I give? Check yourself. You will hear a voice telling you, this is the way. It's not too much for an individual to send a message and say, Pastor, I'll give that formula. According to your capacity. And I told them in my church, never ever think that they're not something is too small. Never excuse yourself. Don't limit yourself. One day I was preaching in my church, my, my colleague microphone was misbehaving. Things started misbehaving. I had to change to a handheld one like I'm holding now. And then, I said, I told you, I have my own shame. He said, I passed with this way. Oh, microphone, not a microphone. I said, you see, eh, before I finish preaching, I want to get an alert on my phone. Somebody said, I will, I will buy, I buy it. Before I finish preaching, I want to get an alert when I sit down on my phone. Somebody will say, Reverend, I will buy it. So I finish ministry. By the time I finish ministry and go back to my seat, I pick my phone. Actually, somebody has sent me a message. Say, Reverend, I will take care of it. During the week, say, how much is that? I asked my music minister, connect, contacted our supplier of equipment in Lagos. The man said there are three, three categories. One, 350,000, one, 200, and the other one, three. So, okay, a woman choose. The woman say she will buy the, the oldest. But I told them before next Sunday, I want it here. So I will use it next Sunday. Before that next Sunday, the microphone arrived. And I used it that Sunday. This is how God wants people to respond. Not beggy, 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 beggy. So church, raise the two hands up. Raise the two hands up. Raise the two hands up. I want to pray for you. Raise the two hands up. In Jesus' name. Lord, behold, a church. People that you love so dearly, beyond what they know and imagine. People you are blessed and you never grow tired of blessing them. And I see loads and loads of more blessings. Lord, I ask King Eternal, you speak to each heart to respond accordingly. And to give. And all as they give, we have mentioned some examples from scripture. There are so many others where we see people responding to you, not to man. To you, first of all. You never owe anybody, oh God. I know you will not begin with them. As we set this memorial of remembrance of this year's Sea Worship Revival, Lord, each person's name will be included in your list. In blessing, you will bless. And in multiplying, you multiply them beyond their imagination in Jesus' name. Now, have a seat. We are told about four million. Everybody close your eyes. Buy your eyes. You close your eyes. Close your own eyes. You have your own. Don't borrow another person's own. Close your own. 
Close their own. Mind their business. You are here this morning. You have been touched by the Lord. God has spoken to you, not, you, not me. God has spoken to you. I'm only a vessel, a messenger. Say so that 4.5 million we need. I will give 1 million. Can you just raise your hand and bring it down? I'll give 1 million. Raise it, bring it down. 1 million. God helping me. I'll give 1 million. Raise it, bring it down. So that nobody will know you is between you and God. Number two, I will give 500,000 naira to support, to complete that amount needed so that this project will be completed this 2023. Raise a hand now. Raise a hand. Bring it down. I'll give 500. Thank you. Any other person? I'll give 500,000 toward achieving the goal of buying and installing the solar inverters. Yes, in order one, 500,000. I will give 300,000. Can you raise your hand and bring it down? Just 300,000. I'll give it to support the church. 300,000. Can you raise your hand? Raise it, bring it down. Just raise it and bring it down. I will not ask you to hold it up there. Nobody? 200,000. I will give 200. Raise your hand, bring it down. Yes, thank you. Another person? God bless you. God bless you. You know one? I will give 200,000. Just raise your hand. Bring it down. I already seen two persons, two hands raised up. Just raise your hand and bring it down. I will give 150,000. Can you raise your hand? Raise it and bring it down. Thank you. Just raise it. God, thank you too. I will raise it. I will give. I just raise it and bring it down. There are two for 150,000. Two. Okay? 100,000. God helping me. Yes. Raise it. Raise your hand. Raise it. I want to count you. Raise it and bring it down. Yes. One, two, three. Yes, I'm seeing three of you. God bless you. Bring your hand down. God helping me. I will not be absent from this project. I'll give 50,000 naira. Just raise your hand. Raise it. Raise it, raise it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Thank you. God bless you. Bring your hand down. Thank you. Nine of you. I will give... 30,000. Raise your hand. One. I will just, only 30,000. Just raise your hand. One. One. Thank you. Bring your hand down. Thank you so much. God bless you. I will give 20,000. Yes, raise it and bring it down. One. I counted one. One, two. One, two. Right. Three, four, five. Five. God bless you. Bring your hand down. I will give 10,000 naira. Raise your hand and bring it down. Raise a hand. 10,000. Raise a hand. I want to see the hand. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Okay. Thank you. God bless you. The last, I'm not going below this, 5,000. I will give 5,000 naira. Raise a hand. Raise a hand. I will give 5,000 naira. God helping me toward this special project. I'll raise a hand. I want to count you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, nine, ten. Okay, ten of you. God bless you. All of you that raise your hand, can you now rise up? I want to pray for you. Whatever category, rise up on your feet. I've known something. There are some people they will not raise them, but they will give. I've known, I've known them. I, I know how in them in my church. In fact, sometimes I didn't give pass. But I implore you to join these people. I want to pray for you. I want to hear testimony before the end of the year from pastor that the project has been done. And if you are not here, there are people who are joining online. Pastor, there are people online. Eh? Okay, those of you online, please also join. You can do your transfers to the church account. And those of you who are standing up, you can do your transfers to the church account. I think you have a project account. Or you can, yes. And then when you are doing transfer, remember, put, indicate clearly the narration. Where, Solar inverter. And you say full solar inverter. Solar inverter. If you check, please indicate. If it's cash, indicate it so that they will properly, uh, it's a designated fund. It's not a general fund to be, so that they will not collect conversion dues on this one. Conversion dues doesn't touch this one. Can you raise your two hands up as, as I pray for you? Raise your two hands up. Keep those hands up. Keep 
Give them up. That's a passage, a verse of scripture that God laid in my heart to pray, used to pray for you. Just keep it there. Using Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 23. He said, he will also send you rain for the seed you sow in the ground. And the food that comes from the land will be rich and plentiful. In that day, your cattle will graze in broad meadows. May the Lord send you rain in your land in the name of Jesus. May the Lord send you seed in your land in the name of Jesus. As you set out to obey the Lord and to give as the mark of demonstration of biblical stewardship in New Covenant Baptist Church on this second day of April 2023. May the Lord that blessed Abraham bless you mightily. Amen. May the Lord that stopped the disaster that was ravaging the land of Israel, any impending disaster the enemy planned against you, may the Lord break towards it in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the Lord supplied for that widow in Zarephath, and she never lacked food or drink for the duration of the drought. In the midst of scarcity, may you enjoy plenty in the name of Jesus. And as the Lord multiplied what that lad gave, may the Lord multiply your resources in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father, today for this congregation. Thank you for even as these ones and the and others that didn't stand or who didn't indicate, but who in their hearts have made up their mind to give. Bless them mightily, O oh God, that this project will be completed as quickly as possible in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, really good. God bless you. Shall we give?